Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. Fear Street, part three, 1666, is the final film in the Fear Street franchise, uh, possibly. Who knows? They're, the way this ends, like every horror movie, uh, there is possibility for more. Uh, which the franchise in general is okay. I would say this is my, it kind of feels like I love the first one, 1994. And then I liked the 1978 a little bit less. And then this one, I liked it even, even less, even though part of this one takes place in 1994. This, this fear street part three is, a bit confusing to start. Uh, so we're now in obviously 1666, but all of the characters in this movie are people, are actors that were in the previous two films. So you want to talk about being confused watching a movie that should not on any level be this confusing. Uh, they have weird accents that do not fit at all. Although I think as the movie goes, the accents kind of die off in, in, in some characters just die off that had those accents. But I did not like the fact that they, that, that all these actors are, it was, the movie would have been so much better. If I mean, I don't know how they would have portrayed this in the books, uh, but I would have preferred them just being new actors playing these new characters. Um, because the whole time I'm like, okay, who was that from that one, and what like was that character? Is this is this new character supposed to be related to that character in some way? Is this like some kind of mirroring of different storylines from the previous two kind of coming together to add to this this storyline from 1666. I don't know if any of those potential theories are are true in this in this film, but that's what my brain is trying to think. It's like why are they doing this? I mean aside from just like not casting more actors I, I don't know but and I didn't really like because I just saw these people in these other movies I didn't buy any of the I like it at no point did it feel like 1666 it felt like a bunch of people from today doing a reenactment of 1666 but like with modern day type of interactions like even still like there's a, a mild thing of uh of i mean the the main character so uh the woman who was uh in the first movie uh kiana is the actress's name she's playing sarah fear in this movie but uh in the first movie oh let's see does it show it no come on a little over four years ago, I started The Many Faces. It's an ongoing series of abstract ink portraits. Each piece is improvised. Each piece is released daily. Start collecting now. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF. That stands for The Many Faces. And save yourself 25% when you use coupon code RTS. That stands for The Ray Taylor Show because that's what you're listening to. And I love you. So I want you to save 25% when you use that coupon code. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF and use coupon code RTS to save 25%. When you start collecting one of over 1,600 original ink paintings by myself, I made them. Support me. I love you. Back to the show. Oh, she, she played Din, uh, Dina in the first movie. So Dina from the first movie, which is uh, the main character who's she's the one that survived 
Her girlfriend was Sam. In this movie, she has a girlfriend uh, who is played by, oh my goodness, I don't know if it was Sam from the first one or not, but there's a similar lesbian relationship in this one. And it seems like it's looked down upon about as much around the same as it was looked down upon by Sam's family in the first one. So, uh, you know, like I've, I, I kind of have an idea of what life was like in 1666 and it's like the, the behavior of characters I would not be like women in 1666. There's a scene where Sarah fears is roasting this other dude. It's like hitting on him and he's got a boner. It's during this like party scene. And it's like, there's no way a woman would get away with roasting a dude. Like, women would just get beaten. Like, so this movie's, like, already in some kind of, like, fairy tale version of 66 that's got all these actors from the first two. It's just, like, I am so detached from everything going on in this movie. Um, But it tells the story you have. So, of course, you have that relationship, which is kind of a the the town thinks that this lesbian relationship is the devil's work and they are witches and eventually the t- the town like the food goes bad the water gets spoiled like these bad things are happening so they're blaming it on the witches and they're saying that those are the witches so now they're like the the town is after them to to burn them and sarah fears is the witch that has haunted shady side for generations um so the story of this is is interesting because it turns out that it wasn't sarah fears she wasn't a witch it was just people saying that she was a witch because she was different than them uh or not willing to pretend to be something different like uh, uh, most people do um it was actually the good family, one of their ancestors from 1666, made a deal with the devil. And if and he gets he he for what he does for the devil is he names a person for the devil to take, which he names who gets possessed. So each year, it's somebody in the good family that gets passed down through the generations of the good family. This ability to name somebody who is going to turn into a monster in Shadyside, thus allowing Sunnyvale to flourish and succeed. So that's why modern day Sunnyvale is full of rich people that have everything and Shadyside is, you know, poor people and whatnot and they have these horrible tragedies that happen so the the story okay fine fine no interesting real monsters in this one because it's too early it's you know the people are the monsters in this one uh for the most part i think we do see some monsters but it's like i don't know it was just like it took me so long to like kind of find out we see the scene where the the preacher i think it was mentioned in the last movie uh of one of these these uh tragedies that happened is that the like the pastor had gouged his eyes out and the entire congregation in the church had gouged their eyes out and the congregation was full of kids which henry being one of the kids who was josh from the first one which josh i really loved but henry He's one of the the characters that had uh, this accent that was tough, tough. to. It's like this Irish, Scottish accent thing. And it just, I, it it confused the hell out of me, confused the hell out of me, but he died and he was one of them and is sad, right? That was a sad moment because I like that, the actor anyway, I, I enjoyed him in the first movie, um, didn't really get to see much of who he was i mean i guess like they're all kind of playing sim I... join inspired disorder plus today head on over to inspired disorder.com slash plus to join membership includes members only discounts and deals 
You get access to the Ray Taylor Show completely ad-free, as well as bonus episodes. You get access to the complete live painting archive. You also get access to every single podcast ever produced by Inspired Disorder, hosted by Ray Taylor. You get access to Ray Taylor's personal blog, as well as the opportunity to ask me any questions. So if you want to start a podcast, you're into art, ask me anything. And so many more things are being added every day to Inspired Disorder Plus. So sign up today, become a member, head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus and become an Inspired Disorder Plus member today. It just, it's just trying too much. And then about a minute in, potentially, or not a minute, but an hour, potentially one hour and 66 seconds, maybe. But around that time, so 666, which was kind of kind of interesting, but around an hour in this movie, we go back. Once we find out what happened, we go back to 1994. And we find out, you know, good is they find out that good is the reason why things are they are the way they are. Um, and they end up, uh, oh, they end up using, I guess, you know, they, I think the the big, the big s- setback from this entire franchise is that they have the ability to create and seemingly created extremely interesting monsters, but have done a horrible job utilizing them in any interesting way. Like I would have loved to see a movie where instead of trying to find out how like where the focus is so much of the Sarah fears thing. Like that should have been such a back, like a, like a third, like kind of story beat. Whereas all of these movies really should have focused more on the characters, these monsters as they turn. And just like, if you set up, like it just it would just be it would make the monsters more interesting instead of just looking interesting maybe if we got a little bit more of a backstory if we i don't know it's just like it it feels like such a wasted opportunity having the ability to create these super interesting monsters that can all kind of team together almost like a you know a, like an avengers of of monsters that that are are controlled by the good family um like that could have been which maybe there's some loophole in something like that happening. Because like I said, at the end of this movie, like at the end of most horror movies, there's an event that kind of leaves the door open, as it were, or maybe a spell book in the hands of somebody to, so they can summon, make a deal with the devil themselves. So that's where they can, I guess, turn. But then you're not going to have all those monsters because like all the names that were collected disappeared. So it would have to be a new collection of names, which is fine. I just think that it, the 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 fact that they had this abundance of of monsters that they could work with, they focused way too much on this this the Sarah Fear story that was like, you know, understandably I guess about um, understandably you know touching on some modern day kind of things, but ultimately you know disappointing disappointing should have had different actors um but it is what it is it is what it is it was a fun like as a whole it was fun i really enjoyed the first one uh but this third one was uh a little bit little like i my interest declined as the series went on uh but check it out it's on netflix fear street part 3 1666 New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch!